All right, I'm pleased to welcome on to College Golf Talk back-to-back winner in college golf, probably, in my opinion, the hottest player on the men's side right now. That's Luke Clanton, sophomore from Florida State, uh, defended home turf a couple of weeks ago at the Seminole Intercollegiate at Seminole Legacy, and then turns around and wins arguably the, the toughest event of the spring, the Valspar Collegiate down at the Floridian in Palm City. A lot of great players, great teams, and he was able to get it done. So Luke, uh, thanks for coming on. And, uh, has it, has it sunk in yet? I know that's kind of the cliche question, but, uh, <laughs> how do you, how do you kind of sum up, uh, what you accomplished a couple of days ago? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of settled in by now, but, um, it's just been a long journey. I think with the whole team as well, like Getting a, getting a team win like that as well is just massive for us confidence-wise. Um, we all know that we've been playing well, and, you know, and Fred's been playing well, Gray's been playing well, Cole's been playing well. We know that if we can all kind of do it at the same time, we could win a big event like this, and we did. And um, for me to go back-to-back is great, but, you know, I really want to win a national championship with the team, um, and that's kind of my main focus. And if I play good on the side of that and win a couple of events, that's great, but um, – I really want to win a national championship. Well, we'll get to national championship talk a little <laughs> bit later. But first, uh, what was the blood pressure like down the stretch? Because for us watching on live scoring on golf stat, the finish by you guys and Vanderbilt, a lot of a uh, lot of yeah. big numbers. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that was all conditions and not so much uh, <laughs> nerves and and play from individuals, but uh, to. Talk us through that. I mean, what what is the pressure like coming down the stretch with Vanderbilt hot on your heels and a golf course that is willing to punch you <laughs> down low over and over again? Yeah. I mean, Floridian in general, those last four or five holes are pretty tough. Um, you know, I've been playing good all week, and I haven't really checked golf stat at all and, and checked the score, so I didn't know what we were at until I was on 16 T and I, I look at ducks and I go, Hey, like, you know, what, what's it at right now? And he goes, we have a four shot lead. He didn't tell me where I was at. So I knew that I, I had a four shot lead with the team. Like we were there. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I probably got like a one or two shot lead individually. So let, let's stay, let's stay locked in, do everything. I bogey 16. So does Matthew Rydell. And, and I'm like, okay, Let's kind of lock in. Let's just make two pars coming in. Par 17, get on 18 tee box. Dude, that was probably one of the toughest tee shots I've hit in a while. I mean, it was blowing 30, 35 and two left to right. I just kind of punched two iron out there. You know, I think it was probably averaging a five. <laughs> par four is probably averaging bogey. Um, I made bogey and then realized that I had a six shot lead going the last hole and team was kind of locked in. So, yeah, it was it was nerve wracking in the moment. If I checked the score, probably after <laughs> the tee shot would have been a little bit better. But you know, it, it was good. Now, some camera there caught you saying something off the green. I forget what it was. It was something like that's so much pressure or something like <laughs> that. Is that something you normally say walking off a golf course after after winning or no? Um, no, no, probably not. Um, I think to me it was it was the fact that. I knew if I won, I would get a PGA Tour start. Um, and I've been really wanting to play just one event on the PGA Tour, get my feet wet in it. But, you know, to finally kind of do it. And uh, my mom there and my two uncles there. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just kind of perfect scenario. I tried, I was going to go pre-qualifier for the for the Voss Bar. And then uh, all the spots got filled up the day I tried to sign up. We called the guy. Bar, yeah, right? for this year. Yeah. And then, and he was like, well, you can't make it. So I was like, okay, cool. And then went here and made it next year. So I'm probably going to email him back saying, we'll see you next year. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was just, it was nerve wracking coming down the stretch. And, you know, I'm really proud of the guys and how we did. And, you know, 18, 17, 16, 15, all those holes are tough. So, yeah. So I, I looked it up while you were talking, the scoring average for the final round on 18, 4.7. Yeah. 16 was the second toughest hole, the one you bogeyed. But just <laughs> six birdies on each of those holes 
um, on the day, 15 doubles on 18 and one other. That other, of course, was Gordon Sargent making an eight. Um, seems like fairly easy to do no matter who you are out there if you get one sideways and perhaps wet. But yeah. the the other thing I wanted to address from this tournament is, and, and this was all o- over social media, so I don't know if, if is, is Coach Trey, is, is he the one with kind of documenting everything with his phone and sending it into the SID? Or <laughs> yeah. is, is he, he's kind of team dad also. With yeah. His, yeah. With he's the iPhone, man, iPhone six or something. <laughs> it in. Um, but you, you guys flew something pretty special to and from there. Can you just tell us how you guys rode in style down there to Palm city and back? <laughs> yeah. Um, lucky enough, we have, a, we have a pretty good connection. Um, he's a five time age champ, Brooks Kapka. And he was like, hey, you know, uh, if you want to get maybe a private jet down to Floridian, that'd be sweet. And we said, why not? <laughs> it's, 30, it's 35 minute flight. We'll take it for sure. And um, funny enough, we're finishing up, whatever, getting our ceremony done. And coach goes, oh, we got a flight in two minutes. We're going to be back in Tallahassee in <laughs> like an hour. And I'm like, wow. OK, sweet. Nice. You know, I mean, it's um, it's pretty unreal. I mean, just to even have the ability to do that and and Brooks for doing that for us. It's, um, it's pretty cool, man. I mean, getting up there, getting your own food on the private jet. Yeah, there's wait staff on that point. Yeah. This is it, for those listening, this isn't a, this isn't an eight seater, you know, private jet that, that us normal people or, yeah. or half normal people are used to taking. This is like a small, like regional, uh, Delta type, uh, I they're really close to it, dude. I mean, it's, it's unreal. Like, I, we were getting back, come back and they had like spring rolls, fruit, like, like whole bunch of fruit there. And I was like, this is, this is unreal. Like, of course I'm going to eat this. Why not? Did they have um, spirits for ducky or, uh, (laughs) they they waited a little bit, a little bit, but, um, no, man, it's, it's awesome. I think, uh, you know, it's Brooks Kepka is a really good guy. I think he probably, probably gets a little bit more of a bad rep than he should just from probably the media side. But, you know, we, we played with him a couple of days before as well. And he's, he's a sweet dude. I mean, he, he knows his stuff. He plays really good golf. I mean, the guy stripes the golf ball. It's unbelievable. Um, and we can't thank him enough. So. Did you pick up anything from him? Maybe tip wise or anything? Yeah. Or is it just, you're, you're trying <laughs> to show off in front of him. <laughs> um, probably not that. Um, yeah. You know, we when I was, we were playing, I just told him. I said, "Man, how do you, how do you deal with that adversity?" Um, you know, it's kind of a big thing that I've been struggling with over the last couple of months because I've been playing great golf for five months and have not been able to close it out. And this is, this was after the home event. Um, but you know, I was talking to him, and he goes, "I literally tried to be as calm and as non, like thinking." And I'm thinking, what does that mean? Like, how does, how does that make sense? Like, of course, you're going to be thinking about other things. And he goes, I'm trying to be so almost brain dead. We got there just not thinking about anything else, just walking, playing, number, hit it. And I was thinking, I was like, all right, well, I mean, that makes sense. Like, I don't really know what to do. And then when I went out there on the final day, I literally said to myself, I'm just going to be brain dead. Go out there, hit a number, do it. And that's it. And every single shot I did that, I mean, I didn't even know what I was at on 16 T box. I didn't even know what I was total score was. I just literally knew I was playing good golf. So, you know, I think for the pressure side of it, it was a very good advice before I went into this week. Yeah. Yes. It's easy to uh, take that advice too. when you know, he's the guy giving it as well. Yeah. There, there's kind of a give and take though, with knowing where you at or knowing where you're at on the leaderboard. Right. Like mm-hmm. obviously if you're, if you're one shot clear on the last tee, like Ducky or someone's probably going to tell you that, right? Yeah. 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 There's, there's a little difference. I mean, like I would want to know if I'm like one back um, to see if I have to get a little more aggressive or if I'm one up to be a little more safe. But, you know, I knew that I had a little cushion going because I just, you know, Ducks was kind of being a little bit like, Hey, you know, you don't have to get too aggressive. And I was like, okay, well, and I know we have a little bit of a cushion. Um, so, you know, it was good. I mean, again, like Floridian's tough, uh, no matter how good you play. I mean, those last couple holes are, are brutal. So, 
you know, we were, we were just happy that we won the team. I'm happy I pulled out the win. Well, let's turn the clock back a little bit uh, <laughs> to junior golf, high school, kind of your origins in the game. You're a South Florida guy originally from mm-hmm. from Hialeah. Is that right? Yeah. From kind of just, just east of, of Doral and the Blue Monster. So kind of grew mm-hmm. up with that event, uh, at, at least the tail end of that event going yep. on. But how do you get into golf um, first off? And what are some of your highlights uh from your prep career kind of junior before college um <laughs> how i got into golf was it's kind of funny um i have two older sisters and you know i'm the youngest out of the out of the group and they used to play golf a bunch and my two sisters hated golf despised it like they just never wanted to play it and they were forced like, to play it then. Yeah, they were forced. My dad, my dad's a big golfer, so they, they were pretty forced to do it. And I was like four or five years old, and I said, Hey Pops, like I'll I'll play with you. And my dad was like, sure. And um, we went out to this golf course with artificial greens. The grass is crack grass. Um, you know, it was just basically a little public golf course. And I grew up playing there till I was probably around 11 or 12, 13, until we started going to other places and able to meet new people. And, you know, I played the same set of golf clubs for about a good five, six years and was able to still kind of win with those clubs. And it made me realize thinking, you know, I see these 15, 16 year old kids with track mans and all this stuff. And I'm just like, wow, like they have it so lucky, good for them. You know, but my dad made me realize that if I can train as hard as I can and stay focused on what I need to do, I can still do it. Um, and then also my two sisters devoted a lot of their time for me. They gave up a lot of, you know, sports and stuff for me as well. Um, you know, it's it's golf's an expensive game and they couldn't travel as much as they wanted to with their sport. And they said, we're going to we're going to stop because of you. <laughs> and I was like, well, thank you. Um, nice. Yeah, I mean. You know, my whole family's been behind me from the beginning, and you know, I I can't I can't thank my sisters enough. I can't thank my mom and dad enough. Um, it's been a crazy journey so far, and you know, I think um, we still got a long way to go, but it's been it's been awesome. Do you remember that set of clubs? And, and first off, what was the age that you kind of had that that set for five <laughs> years? Or are we talking? Yeah, it was it was it was like it was like eight to twelve. Okay, eight like to eight, 12, to, eight to twelve, eight to thirteen. Yeah. And do you, that do you remember what type of, of clubs or maybe what was in that set? And oh, and was yeah. it a full fourteen? Where were you kind of going out there with like eleven? So it wasn't a full fourteen. It was it was uh <laughs> it was US kids golf clubs. Okay. Yeah. So the you know, like the green ones and the purple ones. Mm-hmm. So I used to play uh used to play those two sets growing up and I remember my dad telling me, he was like, you don't need new clubs to play better. <laughs> I was like, dad, you know, like, see these kids over here playing the slider driver, you know, slider tailor made driver. I would love one. And he goes, no, you don't need it. <laughs> I was like, all right. Well, so you're 12 you. and I'm, I'm sure kids who you were playing had 14 kind of custom sets and things yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, yeah, I, mean, still beating them. <laughs> I, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was, it was, it was, it was good. Um, when I first got my set of 14 clubs, I think I was late 13. And I remember it because I remember um, it was from TaylorMade and I remember opening it up the thing and I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. And then my dad, my dad literally picks up the clubs and goes, you're not playing these clubs until you fully know. Them. And I said, dad, like, you can't do that to me. I just got a full set for the first time. Um, my dad didn't let me use them for a good, maybe five months. He made sure I knew every single club, every single yardage. And then when I put them in, that's when I started kind of doing pretty good in junior golf. So it's it's pretty cool, man. So I think this is a perfect pivot to kind of the NIL. How how big has that been for you as someone who, you know, early on it was probably tough being able to fund all the tournaments you wanted to go play throughout the year and equipment and mm-hmm. just everything, lessons, whatever. Um, how, how big has NIL been in that aspect just to give you a little bit more cushion to kind of help you and your parents out? Yeah. I mean, as you just put it right there, um, help my parents out. I mean, you know, we, we didn't grow up very rich. Uh, we didn't grow up with a lot of money in our hands and 
you know, with, with NIL, it's kind of changed a lot of stuff in amateur golf. Um, you know, and I'm very thankful for it. We're able for us to, you know, play summer golf a little easier and not be so stressed out. Um, you know, my mom and dad, my mom works two jobs. My dad works two or three jobs. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty tough on us. Um, and they, my mom works 12 hour shifts, flight attendant. You know, I, I am thankful that I'm able to earn a little bit now just to kind of help them out. Um, but the NIL space is a massive, like big thing for us as uh, amateurs. Cause I feel like a lot of kids behind me as well, like are in the same boat, you know, we all didn't grow up with all of it. And now that we're kind of able to get a little bit of it, we can kind of help our parents out with stuff. And I think it's, it's awesome. What was the moment for you or the tournament growing up? It, this is probably before college because you were mm-hmm. a pretty highly ranked recruit, but what was the one period where you kind of look back to and that was the turning point where you realized that you were good enough to be the player that you are now you know be one of the top players in the country winning these big tournaments um and not just being a a kid who's pretty good and and enjoys and maybe we'll play college golf yeah um i think it was probably it was probably after i committed fsu um honestly I, i mean i didn't win there for a good two and a half years probably through high school um and I went to the Zillia Am and I finally won for the first time after like two and a half years. Um, and <clears throat> winning that kind of gave me the reinsurance knowing that I'm still still good enough to do it. Um, you know, Caleb Serap, Ben James, all those guys were there. And, you know, mentally I was like, man, I, I can still do it. Um, and then early on in the summer, you know, went to North and South, uh, played really well there, won there. And winning there was like, man, okay, <laughs> I definitely can do it. And it's just showing me now. And then later on in the year in December, went and won South Beach and, and said to myself, well, I can repeatedly do it like that. Then we're in a good spot. Um, you know, it, it was it was good. I mean, my freshman year of college early on was a little rough. It was a little tough, didn't play well. It was kind of going through some stuff. Um, and then spring of freshman year was um, started playing better, started mentally just kind of checking in with myself. Um, I think that's kind of the college deal. I think you, you kind of learn a lot about yourself getting into it. Um, and then sophomore year so far has been great. So, I mean, you know, the sophomore the fall was, was okay, a little tired after the summer season. But, you know, um, spring's been pretty good for me so far. And I feel like I've done a really well, a uh, really good job of, uh, preparing for all these events and, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, uh, come down the stretch. So I, I wanted to, to pull up, uh, an article that I wrote and not, not really an article, but a more of a signing day rankings list. And I'm going to read off the, well, I'm, I'm going to read off in, in, until we get to you. And I just want to get your reaction. Um, but <laughs> I, I had number one, Luke Potter, number two, Caleb Surratt, number three, Nick Dunlap, number four, Ben James. Number five, Jonathan Grizz. Number six, Christian Moss. Number seven, Philip Izakovic from Arizona. Number eight, Wells Williams. And then number nine, Luke Clanton. Um, I think it's probably safe to say uh, a, a little <laughs> little underrated, um, I guess. So I, I, I definitely will eat throw on on that one. But Yeah, I mean, I, I, I look at that and um, I think to myself, well, I just have to win a couple more times to fill myself up a little more. So, I mean, listen, I think you know, I, I, I think you've <laughs> yeah. So, uh, NCAA regional champion last year, you mentioned that spring, uh, that was huge. And then you go on and, and play really well to start the summer. You know, you had top four mm-hmm. finishes, I think at the SUNY HANA and the Northeast. And yeah. at that point, are you thinking, all right, I'm, I've done enough so far to be on this Walker cup team. Yeah. A few more good finishes at, and I'm there. Take us through what it's like um, as one of those bubble guys to kind of fight for a Walker Cup spot. Like, w- what are you feeling every time you tee it up at uh, at the December tournaments? Yeah, it was <laughs> it was good. Uh, it was a little brutal, I won't lie. Um, but uh, we, I think it was the week before the Southern, and I get a random call, and I'm just like, all right, who's this? Like, let me just answer this. And it was Captain. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, hey, how you doing? Like, 
when I talk to you and we're talking back and forth, he goes, Hey, you know, just, um, just do your thing. We're going to make decisions in a couple weeks. I said, perfect. I was like, all good. Um, and I remember this pretty well. I was, didn't play great at the Southern, whatever. I think it was a couple weeks after we were sitting down at like L house, eating dinner, eating food, whatever. Um, you know, and I'm no offense to any of these guys. I love all the people there, the USA staff, uh, Walker Cup staff, all the guys, perfect. Captains are awesome. But I remember going on my phone and, and seeing the team. And I was like, oh, I was like, okay, so they already picked the team. Like, I thought I, I would get maybe a phone call saying no. Then a couple of days later, I get a phone call, and they're like, hey, you know, we just want to let you know your first alternate to make it. And I said, thank you so much. Like, I, I really appreciate it. It just kind of stung a little bit just to kind of get an Instagram notification about, about the Walker Cup instead of maybe a phone call. But, you know, it's okay. I mean, I understand fully. I know they wanted their team and, you know, and I support fully what they did. And, you know, they went out and did a pretty, pretty dang good job. So it was cool to watch and hopefully I'll be on the next one. So well, uh, you wouldn't be the first guy to not get a call. Uh, I remember going back to 2017 and Sam Burns finding out uh, actually, uh, via Twitter direct message from me uh, that he was not on the team and that they were announcing it in about two minutes. Um, so yeah. I think his, his words were, well, uh, I think I know w- what that means if they're announcing it in two minutes and I haven't heard yeah. anything. So uh, exactly, pretty good yeah. company to be in. Sam's done all right for himself. He's he's made one of those Ryder Cup teams already. But uh, is that something that still motivates you right now? Or is it something that once we get to next year, and we get in, into that summer stretch right before Cyprus, that's going to be, you know, that, that's going to kind of move to the forefront of the mind. I mean, it, it still does fully. I mean, um, you know, I thought I was definitely in a good spot to make that Walker cup team. And, you know, it, it was pretty big goal of mine. And I was, uh, you know, I had, I had three goals and that was to win and get the Walker cup team and win the USAM. And <laughs> I didn't win the USAM, but you know, I, you I made match and, it, so. yeah. So, I mean, I just really wanted to make that Walker Cup team, and you know, it just it, it stung really hard for sure. And I knew that, um, you know, I'm going to play some good golf coming up, and hopefully, get in a good position for next year's Walker Cup and be on the team. What's changed in your game since last summer? What where do you feel like you've improved the most? I would just say mentally. <laughs> it sounds kind of dumb, but um, you know, I. I I gave up my life um, to Jesus Christ like six months ago. You know, I fully devoted my life towards him. And, you know, it made me realize that golf is not the biggest thing in the world. Um, it's not, it's not a, everything's about a golf ball. You know, it's a little bit more to life than that. And, you know, when you realize that you don't have to go out and shoot 65 to go out and be happy, you know, it's, it makes things a little bit easier on you. And, you know, I, I go out there and I'm thankful every single day for what I get to do and how I get to do it with the team and, you know, it's, it's made me realize that just everything's a little bit more fun than it should be and not so locked in and serious all the time. Um, I think I used to get a pretty bad problem of just kind of being locked in and being serious. So, you know, it's maybe a little bit more fun and, and enjoyable for the sport for sure. Now, were you the type of guy who would break clubs and stuff when you were younger, growing no, up? Better than no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this. They were yeah. too valuable, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were a little too valuable like on the time. Every- one set yeah. every five years. You don't yeah. want to break yeah. them. You'll we weren't be, doing that stuff. Back. <laughs> no, I, my dad, my dad would, uh, would kick my butt if I even dropped the club. So, you know, it was one of those deals where he was, he was pretty defined on my golf clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, do, who would you credit with? You know, obviously you said six months ago that, you know, that's during the fall. Um, is it a, is it a teammate? Is it a friend at school? Um, who, um, who would you credit this kind of your kind of guiding hand uh, toward that? His name, his name is Jace Barber. Um, he, he works with a bunch of colleges, um, kind of does Bible studies and stuff. And he came down uh, early spring. And I literally laid it out to him, just everything, what was happening in my life, all the conflict, everything. I just laid it out towards him. And I was like, man, I need your help. Like, just simple as that. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, and such a conflict I want to believe, but I, I can't believe. I don't know why. And he goes, man, let me give you a Bible. Let me give you a passage a day. You and me will read together. And we started doing that truly about maybe a month ago, two months ago. 
And then the other four months before that, I was having this conflict, you know, of like, is he real? If he is real, then why is he not doing this? One of those deals. And, you know, it's, it's been, it's funny. Cause like every time I have a question, he just answers it right away. Just gives me, sends me a Bible verse and just, Hey, let me read this. And, you know, without his guidance and without him helping me understand the Bible and understanding, um, everything behind it, it's, it's made me understand more things, realize things for sure. Yeah. And I, I think if all 90 players prayed that they would win the Valspar Collegiate um, yeah. <laughs> and all of those prayers were constantly granted, um, you, it, it'd be a really weird uh, trophy ceremony. So yeah, uh, exactly. The, the, the uh, company who makes the trophies would be uh, very happy because <laughs> they would be making some yeah, really good business. Of them. But, uh, exactly yeah. but uh let's let's shift to florida state and the team for a second um i'm curious yeah. with florida state kind of did you grow up like a seminal and and that was your team and you were going there and nowhere else if you had the opportunity or uh did trey and company kind of you know pluck you away from from somewhere um so my mom my mom's a bulldog okay. like a massive bulldog uh, her whole her whole Mom's side, dad's George, side. I assume, right? Not Stanford. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's college yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. It's March Madness. Mm-hmm. My bad. Yeah, yeah. No, and she was she was a Georgia girl, and um, I remember I think I was like thirteen or fourteen. It was like the junior PGA. Trey Jones was right there back at the tee box watching me when I was like fourteen, and I don't think he missed a damn tournament, dude. I mean, that guy was really resilient, just coming every single week and see him every week and talking to him i'm like man like this guy like just just comes to every single event i'll see him hiding and then i'll see him out of nowhere and and i remember i think it was in between florida state georgia and auburn um and i called trey and i said man you showed up to every event if you can do that then you can be like a really good coach at this stuff because you're persistent i said i'm in and I didn't tell my mom and dad when I committed. I I told them I said you're gonna find out when I do like a little hat thing or whatever on the oh, video. Oh, yeah, you did do the hat thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was just kind of a little joke. I because my buddies and me were just screwing around. Um, and and when I picked up Florida State, my mom goes, "Oh, nice." <laughs> she was she was like she was in it, but then she was like she wanted me to go to Georgia and. And then when she met Trey and finally got to know all the coaches, she was very happy with my decision, of course. And, you know, she's a she's a Florida State fan, but she's a bulldog at heart. So it's kind of funny, you know, especially Florida when we – Florida State golf fan, yeah. Yeah, Florida State golf fan. You know, when we she lost – She was just hoping – she was crossing her fingers and saying under her breath, any, <laughs> anyone but Auburn, you know. Yeah, she, she, exactly. Anyone yes. but Auburn. That's Florida exactly State what she was saying to me. Yeah. Lesser of two evils in that situation. <laughs> yeah. um, but – Obviously, you made a great decision. You guys uh, have a great team. Last year, you got really close, and you lose to uh, a bitter rival in the Florida Gators and the semis who then go on to win it all. Take us through that, you know, that period, that stretch there, um, those hours kind of after Florida got the better of you and Ricky made the putt (laughs) uh, in extra holes against Brett. What is – like, are you guys pretty shocked? Are you numb? Are you already thinking about getting revenge next year? Like, what's the dynamic there? Yeah. Um, I mean, national championships is a long week, like a, a very, very long week. Um, so when we're playing and, and we're doing our thing, that day was tough, man. It was brutal. You know, we were all tired. We were all mentally out of it. Even on Florida, Steve was the same way, and – we knew we were just trying to stay in it, stay in it, stay in it. Um, and a lot of the matches came down to 18. You know, we were we were all very close. And, you know, when we lost, of course, it was brutal. Um, you know, against our rivals, of course, you know. And um, Florida was very good at the time. You know, they had five really good players. And, you know, we just got out. We just got beat, basically, as simple as that. But we knew that we have the talent to do it. We have a talent to win a national championship. Um, and – man, dude, have we been talking about it, you know, just talking about just staying in it. You know, we, we want to do it so bad, but, you know, we do really want to train for it. Of course we do. So that's why we're working a little bit harder every single day, what we're doing, 
you know, we're pushing the freshman a little bit harder. Uh, Tyler Weaver, he's unbelievable. And he's been thinly pushing me to get better too. You know, that kid, that kid knows his stuff. And, you know, and after workouts, he'd be like, let's go to the ice bath. And I'm like, oh, dude, it's like 730 in the morning. You know, why can't we He's a freshman to too, right? I mean. Yeah. He's- yeah. He's, he's, he's a real deal, man. He's the real deal. You know, I, I, I love doing ice baths, but damn, it's every day with him, dude. He's just, he's like, let's go do it. Let's go get recovery. Let's go do this. And then. Damn, he's not right, man. We go to the golf course right after nine o'clock and working and he's there with me and you know, he's, he's going to be really, really good. Like I'm calling it now in two, three years, he'll be top five in the world. So it'll be pretty nuts. Amateur ranking is there a professional rank? Yeah. Amateur, amateur, amateur. Okay. Amateur. I was, you yeah. never know. I mean, he could, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean if I call that, that'd be nuts. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. well, well, I mean, this will definitely be on record. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to circle back in, in three years if he, you know, <laughs> wins the Masters or something as a newly Maybe. minted pro. Um, th- this team looks a lot different, I think, than it did in the fall. You guys had, um, you know, you mentioned Tyler Tyler Weaver. You guys had some guys coming back from Walker Cup or going to World Amateur Team in Abu Dhabi. You know, Freddie's. Uh, I, I would probably term that load management um, a little bit, but. What's what's the fall just kind of one of those things, especially those first couple tournaments where you knew that you guys weren't at full strength and that you just had to be patient and kind of wait for, you know, the the fruits yeah. of your labor to come in the spring when everyone's able to go. And and, and I know Brett's still Brett's still on the shelf, but um, I mean, this is probably as good um, as you guys are, are going to be or, um, you know, at, at, at this moment. Um, yeah, you, know, you guys are, yeah, yeah. are looking pretty good. I mean, yeah, the fall, the beginning of the fall was tough for all of us. Um, it's crazy enough is that Trey told me when I walked in freshman year, he says, the only time you're going to have time off is between November to December. And I said, okay, that's a lie. Like, I'll have a little bit in the summer. Damn, if he wasn't right, it's crazy. I mean, coming straight out of nationals, straight into the Elite Am, right? And then right down with the Elite Am, you get about a week off, and then you go straight into the fall. And you're just like, Wow it's a lot of golf. Um, and then <laughs> that first couple of events in fall, you're just kind of rusty. Almost it feels like, cause you played so much golf, you know, the body hurts a little bit, body's tired. And then later on in the fall, we all started trying to get back into our like peak form. You know, when East Lake, we started playing better, uh, Stevens cup, we won, um, you know, and then early on in spring, we had a couple rough events as a team. And then we started getting it back together again. Um, we're building blocks more and more as every week goes and I'm seeing it, you know, I see Bray Albright, the individual winning water yeah. sound, we put, we put him in, we win, you know, Tyler Weaver finishing second at our home event. We put him, we win, you know, f- I think it might've been Freddie at Cabo coming sixth, yeah. you know, sixth place individually. Like we have the talent, we have the guys doing their thing. We just need to figure out what our five is going to be. And simple as that, um, you know, and I respect coach's decision no matter what he does. Um, I trust him fully what he's going to do, you know, even if, like, for God's sake, if I don't play or whoever doesn't play, we know we're going to be full support towards the team because um, we want to win a national championship and we'll do whatever it takes. Um, we trust him. So that would be a, a, a heck of a flex for Florida State to show up at a national championship with a, a sixth man who won the Valspar. Um, I- <laughs> I don't want to make any uh, assumptions, but I, I would assume as long as you don't um, lose a limb, uh, I think we'll be seeing you guys, at, at least at regionals. Um, obviously, that's the toughest event of the year. Um, I think coaches, players across the board will say that that's more stress than the NCAA championship at times just because you, you want to have Gotta a shot. Yeah. You don't want to go home early and have to watch it on, on television, but it's a new venue this year. Um, I don't know how much you know about La Costa or the type of golf course, but are you, are you excited to be moving on from Greyhawk and, and going somewhere different? You know, Greyhawk, Greyhawk was special. I feel like, I feel like it was, it was tough for sure. Um, there was definitely some, some crazy holes on the golf course, but I think all in all, I think it was one of those deals where, if you hit it good and you putted it good, it was good. Um, uh, but I've never heard of this golf course we're going to play. Never seen it. I know Luke Potter and I think Dylan Minade, if I'm not correct, are both members out there. Um, so, you know, I've talked to Luke a lot. You know, I love Luke. He's a great guy. And 
he's kind of <laughs> told me basically to hit straight <laughs> hit in the fairway he's not giving you many tips right let, yeah let's uh, he, he, yeah let's put he's that not, out there now like he, he's much. not giving he's not anything away um no he he's not giving anything away at all Dylan uh, is definitely not giving any any advice. I, I know Dylan pretty well. He he ain't giving it anyone. No, it, yeah. He ain't giving his parents advice on on how to play the golf course. <laughs> yeah, you're right for sure. Um, they just said hit it straight. So I was like, okay, cool. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm, I'm excited to go out there and you know, whatever. Hopefully, when we make it to nationals, just to see how it looks. So awesome, Luke. Well. Uh... Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, good luck to you the rest of the spring. And uh, if I don't see you before, then good luck uh, trying to qualify for the U.S. Open at Pinehurst, which is a, a special place for you being a North and South champion a couple of oh, yeah. years ago. So oh, where's where's that putter boy trophy? Is it in your dorm or? No, it's not. It's uh, oh, it's back okay. home, back home in the closet, stuffed up there. So you know, oh, Butter Boy, we, Butter Boy is in the closet. Okay, <laughs> we right. we try. It. So Butter I have boy. this little little pet peeve is, I don't like really showing too much of the trophies. I kind of like to keep them away a little bit, uh, just so I can have as much as I can. <laughs> I just don't All like right, to well, have that out about. Well, it, it's like Tiger using some of the using his Player of the Year trophies as four <laughs> stops um yeah all right well we'll just just make one promise to us here at college golf talk if you win the ncaa individual and or team title you know that that needs to be you need to build a shelf right behind where you are right now put those two trophies up and then we'll get you back on and you can show them off a little bit because those are definitely worth showing off so we'll do uh, thank, i'll do that thank you so much again for uh Coming on and to our loyal listeners, uh, another episode in the books uh, next week. We'll see you at the Augusta National Women's Amateur. And until next time, this is Brentley signing off for Steve Burkowski as well. Uh, thanks for tuning in to College Golf Talk.